Sarah, thank you so much for joining me again on the show today. Remind everybody who you are and what you do. Sure. So my name is Sarah Kimmel. I run the uh, social channels Family Tech. So what I say is I help families understand and manage the technology in their home. So that's my passion. That's what I do on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all of the above. Yeah. And I, I admit, I will go to your channels. I will go to on your social media and look up. It's like, okay, what does Sarah say to do here? So yeah. So thank you for doing that awesome. because people like me uh, count on you. So uh, keep it up. Um, awesome. So you are a mom and you are a tech safety advocate. Why, from your point of view, why is it important to keep our kids safe online? You know, there's so many reasons, you know, and the first of all, I'm not a big fear monger. I hate mm -hmm. when people are, you know, want you to be afraid of everything that's out there. But the truth is there are malicious people out there that want right. to do you harm, that want to do your children harm. And there's also inappropriate content out there that you don't want your kids accessing, you know? So there's that aspect, you know, and that's the kind of aspect I like I touch on, but everybody knows that. And, you know, hopefully everybody understands that there are real dangers out there, you know? So th what I really try and, you know, advocate for is that, Kids, you know, I'm not going to say they're dumb, but <laughs> they don't have fully developed brains. And I sure, would say, yes. yeah, you know, when I was 16, I look back at some of the stuff I did. I'm like, I was an idiot. Like <laughs> you just, right. you know, I, I even, you know, back in the nineties, when I was a teenager, I, I look at some of the stuff. I'm like, I drove six hours to go visit somebody and then drove six hours back home, like, and not tell anybody where I was going. Like, and I didn't have a phone. Those didn't exist back then. So I'm just like, I'm such a, you know, an idiot. Yeah. How did and we survive the nineties? <laughs> I have no idea. But, and so you look back on those things and you're like, oh, you know, kids just really don't think about the consequences of their actions. And so it's up to us to really help, excuse me, guide them through those things, you know, because they don't understand they're a little naive, they're a little bit undeveloped in their brain and, you know, they need some guidance. Um, and then the last thing is that the online world is permanent. You know, something that they do now can have repercussions 10 years, 15 years down the road. And so it's really important to help protect them from themselves uh, in those situations. You know, you see all the time with celebrities and things like that, a tweet that they sent out 10 years ago is getting them canceled today, you know, and that can happen to your teenager when they're trying to look for a job, when they're trying to apply to college and things like that. So it's really important to help protect them from all of that. Right. And those are all absolutely fantastic points that yes we we need to save kids from themselves kids are and 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 not to be insulting they're ignorant to what they don't know they just haven't experienced right. that part of life yet so absolutely it's up to us to do that for them so you know we have the holidays coming up and there's going to be a lot of tech gifts that are going to be given uh, i think you and i agree it's not a good idea to buy an ipad and then just hand it over to a seven-year-old so like what are some things that parents need to be thinking about in order to be ready to help their kids navigate new technology. Yeah, and this is what surprises me about so many parents that are giving their kids technology. They don't research what kind of on-device controls are already available to them. Um, and, you know, they just hand over, you know, they give them the Xbox or the PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch or the phone or the iPad. And then just, you know, oh, oh, I didn't realize that I can lock this down or do this, uh -huh. you know? So researching the on device, like already built in parental controls for whatever device you are giving your kids is going to go, you know, a huge way in helping protect them. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, doing that research is good. It's not always what's the best deal. What's, you know, the best thing on Amazon right now, what's the cheapest. It's going to be what is there that's going to be available to you. You answered a question uh, uh, probably like a few weeks ago now, and I thought it was fantastic. And I wanted to ask you here for families sure. who are co-parenting with technology, what are some good guidelines that everybody should try to follow? 
Yeah. And this is such a difficult one because every situation is so different. There can be really volatile situations um, and there can be really amicable situations. Mm. So, you know, I would really, really encourage um, co-parents to try and get on the same page with technology. So, you know, okay, we agree that we're not going to get our kid a phone until they're this age. Um, And then at that point, you know, and maybe even putting some of that stuff in the divorce decree might be really beneficial because it's important, you know, because if I have, you know, if I give my daughter a phone and then she goes to dad's house and there's no restrictions or anything Mm -hmm. at dad's house, but there are restrictions at mom's house, you know, it can really cause a lot of problems you know, not only for the kid, you know, because, okay, at dad's house, I have free reign. At mom's house, I don't, you know, and that stuff is going to come up. It's going to happen. But, you know, being on the same page and maybe even getting that in writing um, before you're really getting into the technology world is going to be, you know, a really important step. Um, The other thing is there are some apps that can allow for secondary admins. So, you know, with Google Family Link, I can set up a family and have, you know, a spouse or, you know, an ex-spouse be also the manager of that device. Um, And same with Apple sharing. The only problem with that is you're generally in the same family. So if you have kids that aren't the shared custody child, they're going to be in there too. So it's going to be a little murky in that situation. So um, trying to navigate that will be a little tricky, but if you have a good relationship and you can have that, so they can turn, you know, disable the phone or you can disable the phone when they're in your care um, and things like that, I think is going to be pretty important. Yeah. And it sounds like what you're saying is you need to just go ahead and set the expectation and talk about it and make sure that everybody is moving in the same direction. Yeah. You know, and if it's not, you know, if you don't have that situation, then something you can do. So say dad gives the kid a phone when they're in your care, um, you know, maybe the phone is here or you control it through the Wi-Fi or things like that, Mm -hmm. you know, because you can't um, take it away from them usually or, um, or anything like that, because you know, that's cutting off access to the other parent and things like that. Right. So you can't necessarily do that, but, you know, maybe working out a way, you know, with the co-parent, Hey, I'm really not a fan of this in my house. You know, can, you know, what can we do to, you know, I've got a phone here for her so she can call you at any time or something like that, where, you know, you don't have to accept the fact that they've given your child technology you didn't want them to have, um, but they can, you know, be limited on that inside your house. Very cool. So um, what are some things that parents can do to help their kids just make good decisions on their own? What's something that we can do to really help them understand, like pretty much everything that we've been talking about so far with making decisions and where to go online? What can we do for them? Yeah. So conversations are so, so important. And I would say it's probably one of the most important um, layers of technology, like of parental controls that you can have, because having that um, rapport with them where you're kind of role playing specific scenarios, you're talking about specific scenarios um, is going to go a long way. So, you know, for example, if my son comes across something inappropriate, he'll come in and tell me, hey, I saw this inappropriate thing. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to freak out about it or anything. We're going to figure out like how he saw it, maybe like lock a couple different websites down or, you know, sometimes he'll say, I saw it on this website, but I don't want you to block this website because I use it for this and this, you know, he's like, but I'll be more careful in the future or things like that. So, you know, just being on the same page and, you know, being a place where they can come to when, you know, when something's going wrong is really important because, you know, again, like they, they don't know what they don't know and you having those conversations So sometimes what I do is if you see a news article about, um, you know, some like, you know, sextortion or something, you know, a kid gets scammed online, he's sent inappropriate pictures, he's getting blackmailed um, and, you know, it's, it's escalated and I will show those articles to my kids like, hey, like check out what happened here. Let's talk about it. You know, how can, you know, you 
not, you know, be victim to this kind of thing, you know, and just having those conversations, letting them know what's out there in the world and, um, and how they can help navigate it. Yeah. You, you said two very important things. Um, the latter was you're sharing what's happening in the world with your children and you're not like just keeping them in that little bubble where they're always going to be safe in that little bubble, or you think they're going to be safe in that little bubble. I like yeah. the fact that you're, you're proving it to your kids. Hey, this does happen. This isn't just right. mom or dad being paranoid. Right. These things do happen. This is real. So I really like that. And I also yeah. like the relationship that you've cultivated with your son that he saw something inappropriate and he came right to you with it. That speaks volumes uh, for you and your household. And I hope to aspire to that uh, when my son is is the right age, because <laughs> we're not going to always be there to monitor our kids and what they're right. seeing online. So they got to have that comfort level to come to us and say something went wrong. And I just need you to know that's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you know, and that's cultivated from very young, you know? Mm -hmm. So when they're, two and three years old. And, you know, and I'll say, if you see naked mommies and daddies, turn it off and come and tell me, you know, just really not, um, age appropriate conversation. Right. Oh yeah. 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 Where, for sure. Where you're just saying, making it a normal thing where, you know, they're not going to get in trouble for coming to you and you're going to work together to have a solution, you know, and I usually say like, Oh, you know, I'm sorry that happened. Or I'm sorry that you had to see that. Right. Um, you know, let's figure this out. Right. All right. So, so I have some more like specific questions for you, because I know there's some people out there who were thinking about the gifts that they're going to be giving this Christmas when it comes to like gaming consoles, which ones do you feel are, you know, offer better parental controls or just generally better for kids? So, well, that's actually two different answers. So we're going to okay. say better for kids would probably be the Nintendo switch. Um, just because the games are really usually appropriate and, right. um, and it does have some parental controls. The parental controls are lacking a little bit for my tastes. Like there are things that I would like for them to do that they don't. Um, so on the parental control standpoint, I would actually say an Xbox is probably the best one that you can lock down, even though we're a PlayStation family. Um, <laughs> I love our Playstations, but, um, but the Xbox uses Microsoft family safety and mm -hmm. it has a lot of robust controls that you can set, you know, on chats, on, um, games on, you know, time access and things like that. So, um, I think the Xbox is a really great, um, console that you can lock down the switch is a really great console for kids to play <laughs> yeah and and i think that's good and i will admit uh we bought my son a switch because yeah the games were more age appropriate he started getting into it and then he really wanted to play roblox so we you know for we got together it's like okay we'll, we'll get an xbox that sort of thing and you're right about the whole xbox app there's a whole it's really robust so i'm kind of feeling uh, proud of myself here that uh, these are the things yeah. that you're recommending and that's what we have going right. on here. So that's, that's yeah. awesome. So the last time we talked, you made a really good case. Cause I asked you Apple versus Android, you know, you made a great case for Android. Here we are. <laughs> it's about a year later. Do you still feel that way? Of course. Yes. A hundred percent. I am team Android all the way. And it's not just because like, I prefer an Android device for myself. Like, it definitely offers more control, more monitoring for your kids as well. Yeah. And you made uh, a good point about the privacy issues with Android give parents more control, but the privacy right. thing with iOS is a little bit harder to navigate. And I know that like Bark just recently came out with their own phone and it's going to be an Android platform phone. Right. And so I thought about you when I saw that and how, how much more parents have say in that. So I think if, you know, if my son were of the age, I would definitely be getting him an Android phone based on some of the stuff that you've done on your channel and what you've said here. So that's awesome. Um, That's my goal in life to convert everybody in the world. You know? <laughs> but I always say, um, you know, Apple cares about privacy, even mm -hmm. if that privacy is of a 10 year old. And so it's going to protect your 10 year old's privacy, even from you. And yeah. that's why I have a problem with it is, you know, I'm the parent, this is my child. I should be able to monitor and control it the way I want to. Right. And, and it's just, I guess it's a, you know, a, a double-bladed sword there. Yeah, it protects you, but it also protects them. 
that sort of thing. And it just, it, it goes both ways. So yeah. if I am looking at uh, wanting to get my kid a game, an app or a movie, what's a great resource online where I can go and find out about that game and decide whether or not it's appropriate for my home? I'm going to throw a lot of letters at you. Uh, okay. <laughs> the first set of letters is IMDb. Um, Ooh, okay. So IMDb is what I always use. You know, you're watching a movie, you're like, oh, what else is that guy in? And you yeah. have to look it up and everything. But what a lot of people don't know is it has a really great parental control section, or not, not parental control section, but parental guide. Mm -hmm. And so if you keep scrolling, there'll be a parental guide and it will literally lay out everything but you know here's like sexuality language etc 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 and it's gonna be really detailed as to what exactly is in that movie um that print parents would want to know about um so that's imdb it's probably something you already have on your phone you're yep. already using yep. on a regular basis um i love imdb you know another one people use is common sense media but i seem to go to imdb way more than i go there um there is a little bit of a paywall on common sense media um, mm -hmm, after mm -hmm. you reach, you know, a certain number of searches. Um, the other great resource for games and apps is the ESRB. So mm -hmm. um, this is the uh, electronic service rating board. Um, it's the ones that give you, um, I've got them here. Let me see. I always want to pull them out and then I don't have them available. But the big E and the big. Yeah, the rated, you know, everyone. And they always put that in the, oh, yeah. the commercials too, before any game. It's like, here's teen for, yeah, there they are. <laughs> you have the stickers. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the, the ESRB actually also rates apps. Um, and so if you are looking, um, Apple does their own ratings, but if you're on an Android device and you tap the information um, on the rating, it will be the ESRB rating. Um, and ESRB is really detailed also on games. So you can search their, um, website. They have an app as well, um, that you can just search the game and it'll be really detailed as to everything that is in that game or app. Very cool. So Sarah, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you, um, you know, sharing all this with us. And if anybody wants to know more about you and family tech, where can they find you online? Yeah, I'm family tech on all social media platforms. So just family tech. Um, I am most active on YouTube and Instagram, um, but you can really find me anywhere else like that. Um, on the web, I am family tech. Um, you can either go familytechzone.com or just familytech.biz. And that will link you to basically all of my um, social platforms and everything. All right, Sarah, again, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great holiday season. Thank you. You too, Andy.